Hey everybody, my name is Lucas and in this video we're going to take a look at Monday or Monday.com as it's also known to see how well it can work for us as a tool for a getting things done system or GTD for short. Now Monday is interesting in that it kind of competes in the space together with collaborative project managers such as Trello or Asana, which we've all reviewed on this channel before as well. And I was a bit hesitant to even get started reviewing Monday because it just seemed so out of my league in a way. It seems so geared towards that collaborative uh, project management space that I thought, why even bother trying setting up a personal productivity system for just one individual? Uh, but I did, and I was very pleasantly surprised because as you will see in this video, it can work pretty well for GTD purposes. So let's dive right in and see what we've come up with. It's important to understand how Monday really works before we get started though. So let's take a look at the taxonomies, the categories, let's say, that Monday operates with. On the highest level, you have workspaces. So this is really a collection of every other subcategory and item within that category that you can think of. And in this video, we're gonna just look at one single workspace. You can see that I just have my own Lucas GTD setup one. And it's really an example of how it's geared towards collaborative workspaces, because if you have maybe a company where there are multiple teams working on different things, that's where multiple workspaces really come into play. But obviously this is just a personal system. So we're just gonna look at it for that purpose. Then you have boards. So within a workspace, there are boards, which is what you can see on the sidebar here. These are collections of items. And even within those boards, you can have separate categories, which are called groups or groups of items. This is what you can see here. You can expand them and collapse them and you can use them in all kinds of different ways, uh, which we will go into in a moment. Then there are obviously items which can be tasks, but they don't have to be. These live within these groups that live within the boards. Now, interestingly, Monday doesn't just stop there. You can actually have different views for a board. So that doesn't mean it has different items. It just shows the same items in a different way, which is interesting. And we're going to look at an example of that in the goals board in just a moment later on in this video. So now that we understand the basics of how Monday is set up, let's see how we can use it for GTD. So as always, we start with the inbox, right? We want to have a place to easily capture our thoughts and ideas. And that is just what I put in a separate board with its own group, also named inbox, because in here you can just add an item, which it calls a task. Uh, it can be anything though. So my idea that I just thought of under the shower or wherever, I just want to quickly get it out. So here we do it and it lives there for us to purpose late, uh, to process later on. Uh, you can see that there's a person uh, column here. So everything is structured in a table format, which is nice because that is kind of the way you want to work anyway with a task manager. This, however, is not something that happens automatically. You will have to set it up uh, with an automation before it does what you just saw it do. You know, it added my picture there. Automations are a feature of Monday's pro plan, which is what I'm trialing here to display uh, uh, for you all in this video. So make sure you are aware of that before you give it a try. You will have to pay for it if you want to use this feature. I would argue it's a useful feature and it's also an affordable one, uh, but you can take a look at the plans using the link in the description below to make that decision for yourself. In this case, the automation I've created is when an item is created, assign me as person. Now it's understandable why Monday doesn't do this by default, because as we said before, it's a collaborative tool. So for the normal use case, you'll find multiple persons, multiple single users associated with a single workspace. That's not the case here. It's just me. So in this case, I can just automatically assign myself to anything. There's tags, which is another useful column that you can set up uh, yourself and then use those tags for providing context, which is what I do, uh, uh, which is what I color code blue. If it's a reference item, I color code it yellow. 
If it's an agenda item, I color code it purple and I will go through some examples of that later on. So that is really how you can process it. Now let's uh, do that actually to see what happens. So I can just select the tag here for the context. If there's a due date, I can also select that here. I'm not going to do that though. It doesn't always have to have one. And we want to move it into the next actions. But as you can see, maybe on the left side, there is no next actions board. So how do we do that? Well, the reason for that is uh, it is very much a project based uh, tool. So we need to kind of hack it to get a next actions view. So the first thing we need to do is actually put it under a project, which we have one of here. We have a project for recording a song, but we also have a board for standalone actions. So just for simplicity, let's just pretend this is one of those. And to process it into there, we can just select the drop down menu here and select move to board. And from there, we select standalone actions. And within those standalone actions, we might have areas of focus defined that we want to group those under, but you certainly don't have to. In this case, I'm just going to put it under number one. And you can see that what we just had in the inbox now lives here under the standalone actions board. Moving down to the project view, if you have an actual project that involves multiple actions to get to the desired outcome. Here's a great example of how to use these boards and the groups of items as well. In this case, we've used the groups to divide the actions associated with this project into phases. So we start preparing, right? If you want to record a song, what do we need to do to prepare? Maybe we need to write the lyrics and decide the genre for the song. Then in phase two, once we've done these two, we need to record the vocals, we need to produce the beat, and we need to master the song. Now, if you're not aware of what that means, don't worry. It's a kind of technical term. It just means making it sound good. And once, we've, uh, once we're have once we happy with the results, we can launch it, right? We can upload it online to YouTube, to Spotify, or SoundCloud, or any other of those platforms. And those are actions we can perform from our laptop. But in order to get there, we first need to complete everything from the prior two phases, which is why this view really comes in handy. I really like that, actually. So how do we distinguish a next action from an action that is kind of a dependency or something that comes later on, right? Well, that's where you might have already spotted the status column, which we use here, but also in the standalone actions uh, board. Uh, and this is something you need to set up yourself. So be mindful of that. You can create a new column and then you can select the uh, status column, which is under uh, essentials. But by default, it has different options, which you can edit, however. So you can add or edit these labels. And what I've done here is just create two options. Either it's the next action uh, or it's done. And I guess a third option would be to leave it empty, which means it's not a next action yet, which comes in really handy for these, you know, sequential projects that you want to define uh, from the get-go, but you don't want to, you know, keep in your head what needs to be done after. So this is a great way to do that. We've distinguished the next actions from anything that comes later on. But we still don't have a holistic view of all of our next actions, whether they're related to this project or any other. And how do we actually work from context? That's actually where a beta feature of Monday comes in. So that's always a bit risky, uh, but I did uh, find a way to make that work. So on the left-hand side here, uh, we can move from workspaces down to notifications and the inbox, which is not the inbox we want, by the way, that is just uh, updates provided by collaborators, which you probably won't have or from Monday itself. It's not an inbox to drop your tasks in or anything. And we go all the way down to my work. And what you can see here is that it automatically has these three categories here, which all have to do with when something was assigned to you. Again, the collaborative project management nature of the tool really stands out here. So how do we hack this and make this a next action view with context? So if you wanna filter for next actions within a certain context, all you have to do is go to filters, select the status next action and the tag for the specific context you're looking for. And from there, you can see that the next actions within that context through text that you've defined and only next actions show up under 
assigned in the past week, but it can also show up in one of these. Again, these, you have to kind of ignore them. They are really irrelevant in most use cases, uh, unless there is some urgency involved, of course. Uh, but here you can view them and you can also complete them from here by selecting the status and moving it to done. And this is the same thing that would happen if you would do it directly from the project view or the standalone actions view. So that is kind of the best way I found to see every single action in one big view based on context. Certainly it's not ideal. Certainly it's kind of hacking around it, but you can make it work and that's what counts. So now that we've kind of reviewed the ground level side of things, we can also go to see uh, other applications of GCD and how they work in Monday. So first of all, there's agendas, and this is where it gets pretty simple, to be honest, although it is also a bit non-intuitive, because if you can see uh, here, as we did in the other columns, uh, in other boards, I should say, there's the people column. However, these are all users of Monday. So for somebody to show up here, you need to invite them and actively use your Monday workspace, which is not something we can expect from everybody in our life. And it's one of my main uh, objections to these collaborative project managers. You cannot easily create these dummy records for people. Understandable given their use case, but still a bit frustrating for individuals like us who just want to use it for personal productivity. However, there's a way around it. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and remove the column from this particular agendas board, you know, which contains talking points, questions, or whatever it is we want to bring up whenever we see a particular person or uh, enter a particular meeting. And we just use tax for that, which I alluded to before. Uh, anything to do with agendas, I use a purple tag. In this case, I just set P for person dash their name. So Mr. X, Mrs. X, and you can also create something for meetings, right? Like M dash uh, team meeting or, or, or Monday stand up or whatever kind of meetings you're in. And then you can create anything you want to bring up in there through the description of the item itself. And by using filters, you can filter for a tag and then make sure only the person you're currently meeting or about to meet or the meeting you're about to enter shows up so that you don't get clutter from anything that isn't relevant. So that works really well for agendas. For the tickler file, it's pretty straightforward as well. You can set up reminders, uh, which you can assign to yourself to make sure you are reminded of them. So make sure that happens. Again, set up that automation if you need to. And then through the date column, you need to obviously enter a date uh, for which you want to be reminded about. And you can set date reminders here. So what that does is it sends you a reminder whenever the uh, date arrives, but you can also configure that uh, in a different way. Maybe you want to be reminded a day before uh, for whatever reason. So that's all possible with Monday. Works well. For someday, maybe it's even more simple because in the end, these are just items that you want to process later on in one way or another. You can group them if you want, right? You can maybe purchases you want to make, vacations you want to take, uh, restaurants you want to try, that's all possible under these groups and you just enter the contents here under the item description and you review it during your weekly review or a monthly or yearly review, whatever you do. Make sure you check in from time to time because this should become relevant at some point in the future, just not now. And when it does, you can easily process it by moving it to a board. If it's an actionable item, for example, right, you can process it as if it is just uh, coming from your inbox because the uh, uh, it just works the same way. Areas of focus are mostly a matter of defining and mostly a matter of definition. So these are pretty static items. And again, you can use groups to define them and maybe uh, uh, enter details in separate items. Now for goals, there's an interesting thing to show here because uh, you can uh, use uh, groups to uh, maybe uh, group goals under specific visions that you might have for yourself, uh, which you can define here, right? Uh, but there's an interesting application for the views, which we haven't take a look, taken a look at yet, uh, because there is a goals view, actually. So it's the same item, uh, which I've just defined here as my goal, uh, but you can set up more elaborate kind of visual elements to that goal here. 
so under the goals view, you can set a goal name, a goal target, which has to be a number at this point. Uh, you know, let's say it's 1000 and currently it's zero. So it's obviously 0%. Um, and you can pick a column to track as the goal. So here you could create a new column, put in a value, and that would then show up here in the goals view. So you can get really creative with views. There are many other uh, views and I'm not going to go through all of them because I want to make sure to keep it simple, but play around with this. It's fun and it might be really effective for your uh, particular use case with Monday. We went through vision again, a matter of definition and uh, a somewhat regular review, uh, but nothing more than that. Uh, it's definitely very important. Of course, it's a high level view that you want to be able to take. And it's nice to be able to store that all within the same system. And the same goes for purpose. Now, reference is a very interesting one because this is usually where many task managers really uh, uh, crumble under the pressure, I would almost say, of being a holistic GTD system. Uh, but I have to say Monday really holds up its own here. I just made a quick test here. You know, I use the groups in this case to sort by file type, though you certainly don't have to. You can sort it in any way you wish. I also use tags for reference, which I always color yellow. And that way you can easily filter by topic, but also by file type. But again, you can categorize this in any way you want. By using attachments for an item, you can uh, uh, easily... Uh, store items in this case maybe you know a, a meal plan uh, which has the food tag you can upload it here and if you allow it to load for a little bit then it shows up here as well so you can directly access it from within the monday software you so you can upload attachments which is very handy you can store information of course and uh, i will say for reference this will work out quite well just make sure you have enough space you will need a paid account for that uh, uh, which isn't surprising, but if you use it for really serious life management, you should be willing to spend a bit to get some value in return. So all in all, I was happily surprised by Monday. Uh, I'm glad I gave it a try and it can work. I would say the weakest area is what we saw with the next actions view, which is difficult to set up and get a holistic view of all your next actions with their tags. But if you have any ideas on how to do it better, please leave a comment because I'm very curious to hear from you always. How do you use your tools? Maybe some of you are already using Monday for GTD. And if you're not, I would definitely uh, uh, recommend you give it a try if you're looking for a new tool uh, to use GTD with because it certainly comes very close to a holistic system. So if you want to do that, link in the description. Make sure you also subscribe because I'm going to upload a lot more of GTD related content. And thanks for watching.